In this video, I will be attempting to survive 100 days in the Bermuda Triangle in Hardcore Minecraft. This means that while I explore the many islands within the Bermuda Triangle, I will also have to watch out for dangerous sea creatures and even sea monsters. In fact, every time it starts storming, huge sea monsters will spawn below the waves. And these guys are pretty terrifying. But my goal for this video is to build and sail the coolest ship on the seven seas and maybe even kill one of the sea monsters. And, as always, this map is available on my Patreon, which is linked in the description below. But without further ado, let's get started. I spawned in only to realize that I was on a raft. Yeah, this is, this is not much to go off of. With nothing on it. And the water all around me was very deep. Oh, <laughs> no. And so, I had to be resourceful. Which ended up being problematic when one of my blocks fell into the water. How did it get all the... <laughs> oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, that is... <laughs> After collecting all the blocks I wanted, I figured it would be best to pick a direction and just start rowing in my newly made boat. And so, I set off with nothing but me in my boat, and a lot of open ocean. There goes my raft, off in the distance. I'd been rowing for a while when I remembered that it was in my best interest to find land as soon as possible. Because if it started storming while I was out at sea, well, that would be really bad. But looks like we have clear skies. And while the threat of the Bermuda Triangle stayed in the back of my mind, I really did not expect it to storm on the first day. Luckily for me, I had also just found a structure that seemed to be on dry land. This didn't stop me from catching a glimpse of some of the creatures below the water. Let's, let's get to land. Let's get to this land. Eventually, I found a place to put the bed I'd crafted, and I went to sleep. And the next morning, I realized just what piece of land I'd come across. The island of Puerto Rico marks one of the three corners of the Bermuda Triangle. And, as it turns out, that's exactly where I had washed ashore. Not wanting to wait any longer, I entered the fort I found and took a look around. There's so many mobs, but I don't see any of them. So many mobs. Okay, that's concerning. And there were lots of mobs in this fort, including villagers. But I had found some pretty useful items in this fort. When I went to leave it, however, I wanted to check the crafting recipes for the items that I would need to craft a proper ship. This included both a ship wheel and a ship engine, both of which required items that I didn't have. And so, I left the fort, and while I spotted another structure in the distance, I decided to focus my attention on getting some basic tools. The next day, I found myself on a quest for gold, the one item in the crafting recipes that would be difficult for me to obtain. So I climbed up onto this dock and took a look through every barrel. That was just more food and stuff, alright. And while there is no gold, there were other useful items. But I decided to leave these items for later, and I set off along the shore. That's when I came across these ruins that had no loot at all. But as I walked through the forest, I made an important realization. You know, if I want gold, I should probably go underground. With my intelligence at an all-time high, I explored the cavern I had found only to discover a huge vein of iron that I happily mined. Because of this iron, I was able to craft myself some armor and a shield. Yet, there was still no sign of gold anywhere. But on day four, I wanted to change that. I crafted some more armor and then set off deeper into the cave. This wasn't the best idea. Eventually, I got lost in the caves. And with no gold in sight, I took this exit that I found. But in the process, I had lost my bed and the iron that was still smelting. I crafted a new bed out of the last bit of wool that I had, and I figured it would be best to explore the forest, hoping that some structure would come into view. And as the sun set, that's exactly what happened. So, 
On day 5, I looted this little building, and it has some alright loot. I then got in my boat and decided to sail along the shoreline. I don't like how I can see it just slope off into the ocean floor. Until I eventually came back to the fort and figured that it would probably be best to leave Puerto Rico and head for a new island that might just have gold. And so, I set off once more into the open ocean. I was sailing for what seemed to be half the day. No land. No life, even. Just water. This is, this is hard for me to play. It is. I don't like the ocean. I know everyone says, oh, I don't like the ocean, it's freaky. I really don't like the ocean. It, it's, it's like a genuine fear of mine. You know, even sometimes when I'm in the shower, I get worried that I'm just going to be teleported into the middle of the ocean. Freaks me out. I'm serious. I know it's weird, but I'm, I'm serious. Freaks me out. Shower thoughts aside, I had finally spotted land, and it was rather rocky. I climbed up the cliffs only to see a lighthouse off in the distance. Oh, we have a lighthouse. We have a lighthouse. And as the sun was setting, I planned to loot it the next day. But in the meantime, I messed with these snails. As the sun rose on day 6, I entered the lighthouse and was surprised to find dog food in this barrel. Calamari and dog food. But I climbed up to the top and found some pretty decent loot in this chest, but still no gold. So no gold, but we can do a really cool jump into the water from here. So it all works out in the end. Eww. I then chased some lizards around and went caving one last time. This time, I went a bit too far down. I did end up getting a lot of iron, but at the cost of going deeper and deeper into the cave. And at this point, I was entirely lost, yet again. However, I soon came across this cavern that led straight into the ocean. I decided to make a little camp here for me to smelt my iron, but I couldn't find coal. That is, until I looked above my head. Oh, there is coal. <laughs> okay. Night fell, and I slept in my little ocean view cavern. And the next morning, I finished off my set of iron armor. And then, I decided to talk about my fears of deep water. It doesn't really help, I've been watching all these, um, ocean iceberg videos, like, top worst mysteries of the ocean, Abraham Lincoln assassinated by the ocean conspiracy. It's just, it's, it's all, you know, I'm just, I'm not even going to talk about the ocean anymore. It's, it's majorly unsettling for me. <laughs> Properly unsettled, I swam to the cliffs again and figured that I would want to set off for a new island the next morning. But when day eight rolled around, I decided it would be best to build the ship engine first. So that way, gold was the only item I would be looking for. And so I gathered all of the items I needed, smelted some stone, and crafted the ship engine. I then got in my boat and set off for new land. Except, new land didn't come. You know, I like that movie, Life of Pi. It's a good one. But if I were if I were in his position, I'd just like die on the spot instantly, you know? Out in the middle of the ocean stranded. I think I would actually evaporate. I'd just pff, disappear. As the sun started to set, my luck saved me yet again as I spotted a small strip of land with literally nothing on it. This meant that I was safe, for now. The next morning, I dug up some dirt blocks while considering the historic connotation of my quest for gold. I mean, that's one of the four G's that they teach you about in, in history, isn't it? God, gold, greed, gangrene, something else. After reflecting on my middle school history, I picked a direction and set off once more. And after a bit of sailing, I decided to take a look through my inventory and see what all I had on me. Does this summon the Kraken? I also wanted to clean out my inventory. See, that's not littering though, because that's, you know... It's food for the fish. Fish love glowberries. After my contribution to Team Seas, I continued my travels. That is, until I came across something bizarre. What is that? What I didn't realize is that I had somehow sailed back to Puerto Rico and was in one of Puerto Rico's famous bioluminescent bays. This glowing effect that the water gives is due to the population of plankton in this area that happen to light up when disturbed. And at night, this natural wonder is pretty amazing.
But on the morning of day 10, I realized where I was. Wait a minute. It's identical to the one I saw earlier. That's the port? Yep, okay. We're back in Puerto Rico. This truly confused me, as I had made sure to go in a different direction from where I came. But apparently, it hadn't worked. I'm not even doing a bit. This is not, you know, ooh, Bermuda Triangle mystery teleported me over here. It, I don't know how I ended up back over here. However, it was about time for me to find gold so I could make my ship. And from what I could tell, there wasn't any gold in this island. So I set off once more. This time, in a bit of a different direction. However, the open ocean also didn't produce any islands for me this time, even as night fell. But the sunset was quite nice. I will say, look at how pretty the, the water is. Yet that didn't really change the fact that I was now in the ocean. At night. There is a level of concern to be had now. And this is when I heard some truly unsettling noises. I don't... I don't like that, actually. I really do not. We... yeah, we're gonna... we're gonna find land. And on the verge of losing my mind, I found land. Okay, we, we have land. Okay. But another challenge lay in my path, as the shoreline of this island was covered with mobs. I did eventually find a spot to place my bed, and, very happily, I went to sleep. The next morning, I was able to see exactly what island I had come across. Bermuda is an island at the top of the Bermuda Triangle, and maybe island is the wrong word, as Bermuda hosts over 150 different islands. But it seems as though I had just found one of them. And not only that, but I had to immediately take shelter in this house because of the mobs attacking me. After they had all burned to death, I found a large stack of hay bales, which would be a great source of food. So, I made some bread and then explored the main part of the island. Okay, so... Where there is a ship of some kind docked. And so, I boarded it, but was surprised to see that there was no one on board. No, no crew. This ship had some crazy loot. That is genuinely overpowered. Why is this on a ship? And after I fully looted it, I may or may not have blown it up. I then headed over to the nearby town. And on day 12, I introduced myself to the villagers. Yeah, I just helped you, so give me discounts. You see, I wanted to find a villager that was trading gold. But, of course, none of them were. Oh, this is so cute. Although, I did have fun raiding each of their houses out of 10. This one is a solid 6 out of 10. This one's a 7. It has more space. You have a teddy bear. It's pretty cool. Oh, this is easily like a 4 out of 10. This is pathetic. After my property brothers segment, I figured I should try to craft a smithing table and convert a villager into a blacksmith to then see if they traded gold. But yet again, no luck. However, as I was looking around, I realized I hadn't explored the top of the ship I blew up. And as it turns out, this ship wasn't entirely abandoned. There is something up here. Okay. Okay. Yep. The next day, having slept on the masts of the ship, I awoke to a bit of a challenge. You're kidding. Alright, so what I can do here is I can jump into the water and grab it while I'm jumping, but also not hitting the ledge. Alright. <sighs> that was... Yeah, alright. And then, I set off to explore the island. No way. I just came across a shipwreck. This is the most gold-carrying thing in Minecraft. But, as luck would have it, the shipwreck had everything but gold. And so, defeated once more, I came across a small cave opening, and was pleasantly surprised upon entering. Oh. Bermuda's crystal caves are truly a natural wonder, dating all the way back to the Ice Age. But, funny enough, they were only discovered about a hundred years ago by two local boys who just happened to come across it. 
Yet as I walked through the caves, I was extra cautious of the dripstone above me. After some more exploring, I found another little building. And what looked like the remnants of a fort behind it. And the next day, I decided to take a quick look under the water. Because I haven't seen any sharks. I know there are sharks in the mod pack I'm using. And there's a lot of other real life sea creatures. I also ran into this Ooh. coral snake. That is a coral snake. But shortly after, the rain began. And while it wasn't a thunderstorm, I didn't want to take my chances. It scared me for a second. What's this? Oh, it's a, it's a proper barbecue setup. And as I searched structure after structure, I made the sad realization that to find my essential gold, I would probably have to do some more mining. But as Bermuda didn't have many mining caverns, on day 15, I set off for new land. And I ended up spending the entire day rowing in my boat. That is, until I spotted something rather fun. I decided to explore the land first, and as it turns out, there was a temple. This temple had a lot of traps though. And husks as well. And the loot? Well, the loot was disappointing to say the least, but I still had hope, as the big ship nearby was bound to have something. And so I climbed aboard, and was very happy when I saw that this ship had a wheel. That meant I no longer needed gold, as I no longer needed to craft a wheel. This moment of celebration was short-lived though, as I noticed that there were hordes of pillagers below the deck. And so, that evening, I finally started building my ship. And I also hatched a plan. The next morning, my ship was ready. And it was really cool. But that's not all, as it was time to take down the pirate ship. I killed a lot of pillagers, and after a quick ship upgrade, I killed all of them. And as I started to applaud my newly made ship, Mother Nature also had something to say. Okay, okay, okay. We gotta get to shore, we gotta get to shore. The next day, I got as much coal as I could, as the engines ran exclusively on coal. I did a few more ship upgrades as well and took a look at all the dead fish that had surfaced due to the monsters below. But I didn't have time to linger on that, as my new ship did have just one problem. Yeah, that's still an issue. This is... it's a lot slower. Now, I figured that adding another engine would solve this problem. And so, on day 19, I got to work on crafting one. This engine only made the ship about 20% faster though, but I didn't mind too much as it was now time for me to find new land yet again. And after a bit of sailing, trouble arrived. I tried ramming one of the creatures with my boat, but it didn't really do much. And after seeing some massive shadows below the waters, I decided that it would be best to just sleep through the storm. And finally, on day 20, I was able to enjoy my ship properly. And even though the music was slightly distorted, I was having a great time. In fact, I even had time to give my ship a name. The Valentino, after my cat. But reality soon hit as I hadn't seen land for a while now and my coal supply was running low. Eventually though, land did come into view, and with one piece of coal in each engine, I made camp. And the next morning, I once again found myself in a new destination. In fact, it was the only place in this video that I've been to in real life. It 
Turks and Caicos is an island group that sits right inside the Bermuda Triangle. And while it might belong to the UK, for some reason, everything on the island from currency to electrical outlets is American. Feeling right at home, I started to take a look around. And that's why I found this hole. Conveniently named The Hole, this sinkhole can be found in Turks and Caicos and has a pool of salt water at the bottom of the 60 foot drop. But this didn't hold my attention for too long as I soon found a fancy mansion. And after looking around in it, I kind of wanted it. It's a very nice house. This mansion also had a lot of food, which was helpful. However, I soon came across the island lighthouse. And after climbing to the top of it, well, you can guess what I did. Okay. Probably do it from here. There we go. Towards the end of the day, I went to retrieve my ship so that I could bring it around into the bay area. And so the next morning, I docked it to the best of my ability, even though the water here was too shallow for my ship. After disembarking, I found my way to this bakery. Oh, wow. And then this little house. But the neighboring house was the one that caught my eye. I won't interrupt your moment. I'm just gonna... At this point, I figured it was time for another boat upgrade. And so that's just what I did. Okay, so I fitted the boat with a nice uh, barbecue setup. And then if you go over here, we have Mr. Flamingo. He's, um, well, he's, he's doing his duties. And then to guide us, we have our garden gnome. So, uh, yeah. And I also decided to get more resources so that I could make more engines. After all, my ship looked great, but it was still a little slow. And so I explored the island some more, only to find that there were no caverns at all. This is pretty. The next day, I was able to get some stone, and after crafting two more engines, I remembered that I needed coal. A lot of coal. And so, on day 24, I went digging in the ground, only to find that the ground contained nothing but dirt. No stone, no ores, just dirt. Reluctantly, I checked the shore. Now, Turks and Caicos might be known for their tropical views, conch shells, and beaches, but it's also known for this 7,000 foot drop off. And get this, I've snorkeled next to it in real life. Yeah, me, ocean hater. But to be fair, I was not made aware of the drop off until after I was in the water. Anyways, searching the drop off didn't help and I needed coal if I was to move on from this island. Eventually, something came into view. There were hordes of pillagers on these pirate outposts. But after mining into the islands, there was also coal. However, after mining a decent amount of coal, I had one problem, and that was escaping. Oh, okay. Okay. Run, 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 run. Valentino, this is not the time for you to come into my lap. I, ooh, mm, no. Sad little man. Okay, we're going, we're going, we're going. Ooh, that's a lot of pillagers. That's a lot of pillagers. As night fell, I steered my ship back to the island. And the next morning, I wanted to make my ship battle ready, as I was going to tear apart those pirate islands. But before I could do that, I made one tiny mistake. Oh. Yeah, that's... that's my fault. That's... that's not good. Feeling slightly guilty, I helped the villagers and killed lots of their assailants. Don't bother them in the pool. They're trying to swim. That is, until I spotted this Ravager. Oh. Uh-uh. Get, get, get. I had to use both of my god apples in order to get some hits in. And even that wasn't enough. But being the smart sailor I am, I got back on my ship and decided to steer the Ravager into the ocean. I'm just going to push you as far out here as I can. 
and when I awoke on day 26, there was no Ravager to be found. Having that taken care of, it was time for me to get my ship ready for the Pirate Islands. And this time, I would be doing some serious upgrades. Now you see, this ladder here is going to help me just, you know, kind of go into the little buildings. But it's, it's added a lot of weight to my ship. To the point where this all is now underwater. Which would be concerning if I cared about safety. Safety aside, it was time for the siege on Pirate Island to begin. I was met with quick success on the first island. But when I boarded the second island, I had a lot of company. Due to the pillagers surrounding my ship, I had no choice but to swim out into the water to get them away from it. And while I was doing that, I spotted some weird shapes under the water. But my plan worked, as I was now able to sleep on my boat. And on day 28, I finished my siege. I got some great loot, like this obsidian here, and these blocks of gems. But, like the day before, I was also met with a lot of pillagers. After finally finishing my siege, I went back to my ship. And this is when I decided that maybe the SS Valentino needed a redesign. Something grand. And so, I took it back to Turks and Caicos, and began to redesign the entire ship. And this took a while. And it took a lot of resources. But I had a clear vision in mind, and I was going to make this thing look cool. Oh, and also function well. That's important as well. But looks aside, this redesign took me five whole days to do. I'm not even joking. I wanted to go all out and make this the coolest ship in the Seven Seas. And a few days later, on day 34, I had done just that. After five long days of work, I present to you the SS Valentino. Fitted with enough green space to make Greta Thunberg jealous, I was sure to include a wide array of recreational space, as well as a proper cabin. But that's not even the highlight, as this ship came with my very own room. And, even though it was entirely submerged underwater, the glass walls of my personal cabin allowed for me to see underwater, so I could maybe catch a glimpse or two of the wildlife below the waves. This ship was not only stylish, but it was classy. And while it did float a little bit above the water, I didn't mind, as where else in the Seven Seas would you find something as cool as this? And so, to demonstrate the efficient functionality of my ship, I climbed down to my submerged cabin that night and went to sleep under the water. And, the next morning, it was about time for me to set off for new land again. However, before I did so, I wanted to craft this snorkel mask. And for that, I would need string. So, I went back to the island and eventually came across this abandoned building. Which was kind enough to supply me with my string. Then, I went back to board my ship, and I noticed a small issue. And so, after some tiny modifications, I crafted my snorkel mask, only to find that it granted me water breathing for up to one block below the waves, which is entirely useless. But what was I expecting? Anyways, it was now time for me to get my fuel so that I could set off. So after some minor deforestation, I put a ton of wood in the furnaces to smelt into charcoal. And the next morning, I waited for that charcoal in style. However, I did not realize that the charcoal would have to take a whole five minutes to smelt. And so, with most of my day gone, I moved my ship into deeper waters. And on day 37, I decided that it was time for me to dive deep into the water, as I wanted to see what kind of wildlife was down there. And after swimming straight down, I realized that there was a lot of fish that I had yet to see. And a lot of these fish were genuinely scary. But also kind of cool. Anyways, after nearly drowning, I got back up to my ship and decided that it was time to find new land. And maybe on this land, I would find the equipment that I needed to explore the deep ocean. 
And that night, I found my new land. From first glance, I assumed that this was another pirate hideout. And I was correct. I snuck some loot, like these sunglasses and this steampunk outfit. But it wasn't until I found this brewing stand that I actually found something useful. See, I was thinking that I could try to brew a potion of underwater breathing, but I didn't have too much time to think about that, as I also had to face a decent amount of pillagers. However, these guys were pretty easy to deal with. Anyways, on the morning of day 39, I placed my brewing stand and tried to figure it out. But this is when I came to the realization that I needed blaze powder in order for it to work. And that, I definitely did not have. With my hope dwindling, I looked through my loot only to realize I had a full set of beach swimwear. And, after putting it all on, I was very happily surprised. Wearing all four pieces gave me not just water breathing, but also dolphin speed as well. This was huge. I could now see what was in the depths of the ocean below me, and also freak myself out considerably. The sharks were a bit concerning. After resurfacing, I decided to go somewhere deeper. So, back off to Turks and Caicos I went. I arrived early the next morning and, reluctantly, crossed over into the deep blue water. This was a bit eerie, but I was set on my quest, and I dove into the water yet again. This time, there were even more fish some of which were a bit freaky. However, I didn't mind it as much as I thought I would. That is, until everything went dark. It just so happens that a storm had started while I was deep under the waves. Yet, as I reached my cabin, I didn't go to sleep. That's because I wanted to finally utilize my underwater bedroom. And this was, well, unsettling. And it got even more unsettling when something massive came into view. And so, I gave in and I went to sleep. After that fun encounter, I continued my voyage further into the ocean. Eventually, I spotted what looked like a pirate ship in the distance, but out of sheer curiosity, I decided to explore the ocean floor first. Down on the very bottom of the ocean were some weird but kind of cute creatures, like these sea cucumbers and these starfish. But that cuteness soon faded as drowns started to spawn around me, and some of them had tridents. But that was nothing compared to the notification I got in my chat. However, after some fierce battling, I killed the drowned captain, and it actually dropped a trident. And not just any trident. This one had Riptide 3. And I'll be honest, this was the coolest thing I had come across so far. Early the next day, I started my siege on the pirate ship. As I boarded it, no one was on the top deck, but I did see this crystal ball. Anyways, as I descended below the deck, I met the crew. And this was one of the closest calls I've had with death in this series. I managed to escape, but as I swam back to my ship, I couldn't just let that go. I took the helm of my ship, and as I did so, I came up with a genius plan. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> That's, that's gonna be like the, uh, the Flying Dutchman, isn't it? <laughs> I'll be honest, this was one of the coolest things I've ever seen in this game. Look at that. That's sick. And it was very effective at killing the pillagers. 
The next two days were purely sailing days, as I no longer had fuel in my engines, and my ship was really slow. But eventually, on day 45, I spotted land. Oh well. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Oh, that was closer than... Oh no. And as I boarded this small hideaway, I was relieved to find that for once, there were no enemies. You know, it's nice to actually have like a, a peaceful island for once. That's very nice. I used this as an opportunity to find things to upgrade my ship again. And that's when yet another genius idea popped in my head. This time, for a ship upgrade. And so, yet again, I got to work on collecting some resources. And at the end of the day, I had a near-death experience again. Okay. No. The next day, I got more resources, but not before spotting some out-of-place alligators in the ocean. Oh, and I also stared at this radio. On day 47, I finished my upgrade. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the brig. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. You just kind of um, take this alligator here, for instance. I'm going to back it up into the brig, close up the hatch here. And while I was proud of my brig, it was time for it to get its first inhabitant. After many tries, I eventually found success. Yeah, there we go. There we go. But closing it in was more difficult than I thought it would be. Oh, come on. There we go. Anyways, I did end up giving it a name. The Brig officially has its first member. I'll name it Shane. I think Shane is a good name. His name is Shane. And with that being said, when my ship moved, Shane actually stayed in the Brig. In other words, this was a huge success. The next morning, I went back into deeper waters with my Brig attached. And after diving down again, I was actually stung by a jellyfish. Oh, yeah, okay. But I resurfaced. Only to give Shane some unexpected life advice. Just like with life, Shane. The brig is what you make of it. Okay? Great. And then he bit me. I don't know. Appealing. Ooh, okay. Alright, Shane. Bad, bad Shane. The next day, I found myself back at the Twin Pirate Islands. And decided to play a little game. Legendary question, will I lose my head? Let's find out. <laughs> this is right at clearance. Oh. And while my head was still on, something else happened. Oh, what? Oh. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Okay. No. No, no, no. We have a, we have a breach. We have a breach. With my first breach in the brig, I kept sailing, as I hoped to just fall back into it on his own. But after a while, it was clear that I would have to do some physics. With enough momentum, I might be able to... I never should have dropped physics. I mean, this is what physics is meant to be used for, isn't it? But it didn't work. So Shane was officially out of the brig. The next morning, I realized what day it was. And as always on my channel, I wanted to use day 50 as a way of saying thanks for watching this far. And if you've watched this far and like what you see, maybe consider subscribing. I also have a channel membership where you can see fully exclusive videos like me playing Phasmophobia in Minecraft. Or me hunting the Wendigo. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just. But with all that aside, it's time to get back to the program. On day 51, I decided that I wanted to get a lead. That way, I could get the brig more visitors in an easier way. And so, I set sail for one of the islands I'd already visited, as there was probably a wandering trader on them somewhere. This is when I decided to use the ocean floor as a way of seeing where the nearest land was. My idea was to just go in the direction of the elevation. And that night, it turns out my idea had actually worked, except this was not familiar land at all. What? The next morning, I docked my ship skillfully, and then hopped onto the island's port. And this island was massive. I came across the main tunnel, up to the settlement, and found that it was covered with mobs. And so, I put on my steampunk outfit, only to find that it protected me from fall damage, and gave me the ability to perform a double jump. I then faced the mob tunnel only to end up reliving that one famous Enderman video. Ooh. Yep, it's the meme. It's the meme. It's just like the meme. It's just like the meme. Oh, yeah. Yes. With my Iron Giant coming in at the last moment, I explored this amazing island. 
and I found some lapis. But I was still on a quest. A quest for leads. And after looking over most of the island, there were no leads to be found. But there were these iron blocks. Anyways, the next day, I took one last look through the island, and after finding no leads and not much loot, I decided it was time to depart. See, as much as I love exploring these islands, my main objective in this video is to build the coolest ship possible. And for now, that involved me finding leads. So, that meant I would have to stick to my plan and go to an island I've already been to. And on day 54, I did just that. As I arrived back in Bermuda though, a storm began. But today, I was feeling brave. I ended up killing a few of the smaller creatures, but soon after, I was surrounded. And then, I had the nearest death experience yet. Thinking quickly, I slept on the blown up ship. The next morning, I found that a few of the mysterious creatures remained. Ooh. Okay. But they soon despawned and I was left with my initial quest to find leads. Yet as I explored Bermuda, I realized that I could just craft them. And so, I took apart these safety nets and made myself four leads to use. Then that evening, I constructed my boardwalk of death that would lead mobs right into my brig. But my first customer wasn't so easy. Okay. How about you just come up over here? Stupid, stupid thing. On day 56, I made some improvements to my boardwalk. I then went over towards the village to see if an iron golem would fit in the brig. But this also went poorly. In fact, all I have written down in my notes here is Iron Golem Drowned, lol. Which, I suppose it did. I wasn't going to give up though, as I wanted more visitors in my brig. Shane was getting quite lonely. And, soon enough, success did arrive in the form of Sheep Number 2. There you go. Oh, and as I sailed away for New Land, I ended up giving this sheep a name as well. I think Charles is nice, yeah. He can be Charles. The next few days were once again just sailing. I had forgotten to fuel my ship, and so I just wandered aimlessly in the Caribbean. At the end of day 61, however, I spotted a ship, and an island of some kind behind it. So, the next morning, I pulled up to the island, only realized it was some kind of outpost. And this place has some cool little shops for me to explore and some decent loot, like this ship equipment. But the wildlife is what really caught my eye, as this was my first time seeing wild boars in the game. Well, hello there. Yet I couldn't say the same for these snakes. Also, a baby duck hatched when I threw this egg, which I thought was kind of funny. I did find something useful though, when I mined these gold blocks. And, at the end of the day, something on top of the island caught my eye. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Knowing that I'd explore that tomorrow, I took in the nighttime scenery. The next day, I used my steampunk outfit to double jump up the mountain. And when I got to the top, I was a bit confused by the loot. Oh, okay. I don't know what this stuff does. Oh, nice. But on day 64, I wanted to do something fun. And so I commandeered this big ship and actually started sailing it. It's mostly underwater, but that is so cool. That is, until I got it stuck. It refused to move at all. I'm entirely stuck. I, I cannot move. And so, I abandoned it, not taking responsibility for the damages. That's when another storm began. And this time, I wanted to kill one of the big ones. I used my trident to find one but ended up getting washed out to sea. Then I realized something devastating. I was lost. I spent a while trying to find my way back as the night sky appeared over the ocean, 
And this was pretty alarming. But after spending half the night swimming, I found my way back. The next morning, I decided that it was time to leave this little outpost. And so, I went to start my ship. And so, I went to start my ship. I went to... Yeah, my ship was also stuck. Just like the ship from yesterday, the SS Valentino wouldn't budge. And I tried everything I could to get it to move. I really didn't know what to do here. I couldn't just abandon it. But what other choice did I have for now? This was pretty upsetting. On day 66, I collected my obsidian and valuables from the ship. And then I said bye to Shane and Charles, promising them that I would be back. I wish you two the best of luck. And um, yeah, I'm sorry about this. And with no other plan, I got in my boat and rode away and searched for new land. Or maybe even a new ship. And that night, I kept rowing as I had no bed to place down. Or nowhere to place one for that matter. Yes, this was a bit sad. However, the next morning, I used my ocean elevation trick to find land again. And sure enough, that afternoon, oh. I came across a fort in the okay. distance. I came ashore and quickly crafted myself a bed before heading to sleep. And the next morning, I came to an understanding of what was happening at this fort. Okay. It appeared that this pillager ship was raiding the island and attacking the villagers. And, due to my current frustration, yeah. I decided to let a little steam out. I got through two waves of the raid and even managed to kill the Ravager this time. Then, the next day, I killed even more pillagers. But, as I defended the fort, a massive horde of pillagers formed, and I knew that I would have to get upgrades to handle them. So I went back to my boat and got Prot 4 in my armor and crafted a diamond sword. Then, after studying some Sun Tzu, I got a battle plan ready. On day 70, I manned the fort and prepped the battle plan. Then, as the horde approached, I initiated my attack. After some brutal kills, I was awarded the Hero of the Village title, and that was pretty cool. I then set my sights on one of the ships in the harbor and crafted some floaters, so that on day 71, I could try to sail it. But this didn't exactly go as planned, thanks to physics. But I wasn't going to give up. I found my way back to the outpost, and after seeing what the other ship had been caught on, I tried to free the SS Valentino. This process took another day to do as I had to destroy every bit of kelp. And after a lot of work, it still wasn't free. And so I figured it was time to tear it apart and rebuild it. And I did even more work on day 74, tearing apart the front of it first. Oh, and the animals had escaped somehow, which meant that Shane was now trying to kill me. So that was fun. But finally, on day 75, after clearing the front of the ship, I was actually able to move it again. This was huge. I even got Charles back in the brig, and then I set off for... well, never mind. And to make matters worse, it started to flip on its side. And dear viewer, I'm afraid that's where I abandoned the SS Valentino. But don't worry, as I soon came up with an alternative, that was almost better. And it made me look like a proper captain. However, I didn't have a bed on this ship yet. And sleeping on the Valentino that night was, well, very weird. The next morning, I tried to get Charles onto my new ship. And once again, dear viewer, I'm afraid that I have some unfortunate news. These past few days have been rough. But with that being said, as Shane was trying to kill me, and Charles, well, Charles was keen to meet Gordon Ramsay, I decided to abandon the animals altogether. That left me time for modifying the ship slightly to give it a more homey feel. I finished my ship makeover that day and transported all of my items from the SS Valentino to the now SS Valentino 2.0.
And finally, after many days of trouble and tragedy, the SS Valentino 2.0 was ready to sail. And despite the rain, this was a pretty grand moment. However, on day 78, I had a stop I wanted to make. See, my new goal was to kill one of the large sea monsters. And for that, I would need to upgrade my gear. And to upgrade my gear, I would need an enchanting table. Long story short, I wanted the obsidian back that I'd placed back on the fort island. So, I headed in the direction of that island only to find that it wasn't there. Quite literally, it just wasn't there. I went in the right direction and everything. But no land to be found. Confused, I sailed my ship elsewhere the next day. And that's when I came across a familiar rocky land. I used this as an opportunity to get as much coal as I could, as while I loved my new ship, it was definitely slow. And so, after a long day of mining, I came out with almost two stacks of coal, which was pretty good. The next day, I put the fuel in the engines and set sail again to try and find the Fort Island. Yet, as the sun began to set, I came across Bermuda, which just ended up confusing me even further. I left Bermuda and once again went by ocean elevation to try and find the Fort Island. Oh, and while I was doing this, a lionfish stung me. So yeah, don't touch lionfish. And I don't think you guys know just how much sailing I have to do in this series. It actually takes so long to get from one island to the next. And so yet again, I had another day of sailing. And at this point, I was starting to feel seasick. Well, not really. The next day, I accidentally caught this villager in front of my ship. And it was his fault, really, for being in the middle of the ocean. And then I finally found the Fort Island. This was a relief, as I was able to get my obsidian back. But on the way out, I may or may not have started another raid by accident. But I had things to do this time, so, uh, sorry villagers. Now, if I was to fight one of the big sea monsters, I would want to do so in deep waters. So, I sailed back towards Turks and Caicos, and by the next day, I was regretting that decision, as it once again involved more ocean travel. But finally, on day 86, I reached the deep ocean and the pirate islands as well. But this is when I conveniently realized that I needed a book to craft an enchanting table. And so I really did have to go to Turks and Caicos anyways. And so, that's just what I did. I arrived at Turks and Caicos and found a bookshelf pretty quickly. And then I crafted the enchanting table. And instead of setting sail again, I actually stayed the afternoon on the island. Called a vacation, because that's kind of what it felt like. Until a villager tried pushing me out of my chair. The next morning, I said goodbye to my hosts. And then started enchanting everything. And to be honest, these enchantments ranged from bad to fine. Nothing was actually good, which was a bit frustrating. But I did end up getting into deep water again, and I dove down to fight some mob captains. And this is when I got a legendary weapon. This thing was insane. And it was called the Apocalypse. How cool is that? So now all I had to do was wait for a storm. And so I did. But no storm came on day 89. But on day 90, a storm did indeed arrive. I decided to start with this mid-sized monster. And after quickly killing it, I knew I was ready for a big one. And so, I went after one. And this thing made noises that I wish it didn't. It was a lot tougher to fight and got me really low. But, I wasn't going to give up. And after a few more close swings from the apocalypse, I killed it. Oh, and it dropped this heart of the sea. After I slept through the storm, I woke up only to realize that it was already day 91. And because I had reached all the goals I set for this video already, I decided to use these last 10 days to say goodbye to some of my favorite places in this map. But, let's face it, watching me sail has gotten boring. So, I've been kind enough to go through these last 10 days in a montage style. So that being said, let's say our goodbyes. My first stop was Turks and Caicos. I really love this island, and not just because I've been here. I said my goodbyes to the most important parts of the island. Goodbye, weird 
group of... How are there four of you now? <laughs> and then set off for stop number two, Bermuda. This was probably my favorite island due to just how colorful it was. Alright, um, sorry about your house. That may or may not have been my fault. And I may or may not have been the cause of that explosion as well. Um, next stop was the Rocky Cliffs. Nothing really to, uh, to see here. And then it was time to say goodbye to the villagers of Puerto Rico. Goodbye, my villager friends at the fort. Just wish there weren't so many mobs. And finally, I came to my last stop. Alright, this is where it all started. This is the place. This is the spot. Just to think, so many cool different events happened just because I started here, in this place. The last 100 days were pretty cool. And yeah, there's not really much else to say here. I rate the Bermuda Triangle's difficulty a 7 out of 10. And with that being said, without further ado, it is time for me to end. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you all in the next one.